Hello, everybody. Um, so I'm Linus. Uh, I'm going to do, we have a lot of time, actually. We have uh, 45 minutes. I see the clock running down there at 14, but it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> we, uh, I think we have quite some time. And um, depending on uh, what your interests are as an audience, um, I thought uh, yeah, of how to structure this. So I can. I will show you briefly um, how to make one um, example repository reuse compliant. And then maybe, can I get a quick show of hands from you? Who has a laptop with? Nice. Are, and would they be willing to get it out later and actually try something themselves? Show of hands again. <laughs> OK, that's pretty cool. Um, so then I think I will um, try to keep things short um, with the with the stuff that I'm showing. Um, and then we can um, make sure that you install Rios on your machine and that you can actually start using it on uh, one of your projects. And then if you have any queries or any issues come up during that process, we can, uh, we can troubleshoot them together. Um, so Rios is a, a Rios compliant free software project. It's a recursive. Um, like the GNU thing. <laughs> GNU is not Unix, GNU is not Unix. Um, and you can contribute to it. Um, I'm one of the maintainers. Um, we're always looking for, for help. Um, and it's on GitHub. Currently, uh, once uh, Gitty adds federation features, uh, we will move it to, to a free uh, instance, uh, to a free forge. Um, so let's start. So one thing, um, a very nice way to get started with this is to um, actually, let's start with the very basics. Let's uh, install it. Um, reuse is in so many package repos, so it should be super simple for you to install it. I think we're in more than 13 package repos. Um, I just checked today, so we are in Arch, uh, Debian, Fedora, uh, Nix, pa Nix packages, of course, OpenSUSE, um, Ubuntu. Unfortunately, 2204, the current LTS is a bit... Uh, is a bit older version, but uh, you can still use it for the purposes of this workshop. Um, but I actually prefer to install um, reuse uh, with a, a tool called pipx. So that's um, that kind of creates a virtual environment for every for every command line tool. And I'm gonna just install it right here. Can everybody in the back see the text? Is that large enough? Yeah. Cool. Um, so now we have installed reuse. Um, the next thing, um, just for um, the purposes of this presentation, you could, um, if you don't, if you can't think of a project that you would like to make reuse compliant, uh, you can take the example repository that we provide um, and clone that. I've now I've already cloned it, um, so let's just move move in there. And Lina has already told you um, how you make a repo reuse compliant. You first choose your licenses, and that's uh, what, we're, what we're gonna do first. So there's a command with the reuse uh, tool. It's called reuse init. And it will ask us, hey, what license is your project under? Um, please provide the SPDX license identifier. If that sounds like, uh, I don't know what the SPDX license identifier is, um, you can, we can interrupt this here at this point, and we can type in, Reuse supported licenses. And we get a big list of all the licenses that are out there. This is like because my terminal is really big here. Um, but here you have all the licenses that you know. And then you have um, the, the SPDX um, license identifier next to it. Um, this looks much nicer if you're actually a little bit smaller like this. But I'm going to leave it zoomed here. So let's, for, this, for the purposes of this project, let's choose uh, GPL, GPL3. I need to learn to type. Or later. Um, let's also use uh, CCO 1.0, which is uh, a license I like to use for kind of insignificant files, like git ignore files, or maybe if you're, nothing special happens in your Docker Compose files, you can also. Um, I often license my Docker Compose files like that. So um, that's at also at CC0. Um, maybe if you have pictures. Um, but you can, you can always come back and, and add more licenses later. I'll show you how to do that. 
Um, and please, if at any point something is unclear, um, I want this to be interactive as much as possible, being uh, it being a stream and in this room. So, what is the CC zero license? Um, I think the CC zero license is a very short license that basically just puts it in a public domain. Um, is it? Uh, yeah, it's one. It's a very simple terse license that just puts it in the public domain. Um, so, what's the name of the project? Uh, let's call this reuse example here. Uh, the internet address. Um, I'll plug our website here, which is reuse.software. Um, what's the name of the maintainer? Um, well, let's just say it's the FSV. And contact at fsv.org. Now it's uh, downloading those licenses, and as Lina has shown, it's uh, put them in the licenses folder. Uh, so now if we move over here and then we see we actually have the, the license text over here already. Mm -hmm. So where do you download licenses from? Because I mean, there's, over, the, over the years there have been like very different licenses, like with different addresses from the FSSF, for example, and like different like small changes in the format and so on. So there's like one specific case where you're like creating all these licenses? Yes, this is where SPDX comes in because they kind of keep a ledger of um, the licenses and the license text. So if you go uh, reuse supported licenses again, you have this link here for every license. Um, I'm just going to choose any, anyone here. Um, and we're, we're op it opens a browser where um, you have the text of the license and also the link, in this case here, an archive link of, of where, this, where this comes from. Uh, so this is the work that SPDX does, which is really cool and uh, kind of like a foundation of, of reuse. Um, so where were we? Um, so now if we, we can always run, I, I mean, when I'm making a re, uh, repo reuse compliant, I kind of find myself <laughs> repeatedly running reuse lint. It's kind of the core of the, um, the thing. That's also the, the, the command that you will use in your CI if you want to make sure um, that, a, that a repository remains reuse compliant or that um, stuff is rejected if it isn't. Um, and so let's just run this here and see what it says. Um, so here we see, um, okay, we have unused licenses. Okay, this is already, so this already tells me because the, the kind of the, state, the status quo for, for many projects was very, um, not so, not ideal, is that they just dump the licenses file, uh, the licenses in the licenses file and then be done with it. But that's actually, um, they're just reuse things, they're unused at this point, and I think this is correct. The reuse spec um, tells us we have to, like every file, there needs to be some kind of information of what copyright, who's the copyright holder, and what license it's uh, licensed under. Um, so, and here the, the linter tells us um, the following files have no copyright and licensing information, and then it lists all the files. If you have a very large repo, this will be a very large output. Um, one of the upcoming features will be to have the output of this um, um, of this lint command also machine readable. Um, if you pass a dash dash JSON flag, yes. Um, what about uh, libraries you are just including? Like, let's say you're making a Java thing. You are just. What uh, What shall I do if I just have? A Java project, and I'm importing some random Java libraries. How can I make this thing reuse compliant? Um, well, I think then you would have to see. I mean, reuse is primarily geared towards making your code reuse compliant. Um, and if you're having external dependencies which have licensing issues, then it's kind of their thing. If you are actually reusing source code from these projects, then obviously you need to you, like you make to, you need to make sure that the licensing information that they want you to um, provide, depending on what license they have, is actually also in your code. It's yeah, maybe. Situation when um, and we only apply a reuse to uh, first party and everything. Uh, uh, which is third party separated and if at all possible and if there is no reuse information we can uh, upstream a pull request or a merge request for uh, making them compliant because you cannot yep. add a copyright information to software which is not yours. Exactly. Yeah, 
That's the never. Kind of this is n n do not add copyright mm. information if it's not already there by the author or by the copyright holder. Yeah. Um, does that answer your question somewhat? I mean, so also like <laughs> don't use random Java libraries. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's say I'm uh, I'm. They are use compliant, but I want my my people to know. Well, uh, we are using the MIT license. Uh, so, so part of this project is licensed under MIT, Apache, whatever. Uh, but you don't find the source code he here in this project. But uh, if you run it, you will run this thing. Yeah. What should I do now? Because everyone uses these libraries in some way. Yeah. Even if it's only NumPy. But then it's the licensing is their issue. You know, then they would have to become reuse compliant, and then you wouldn't have an issue anymore. Um, because running is different than distributing. I guess that's the core here. I mean, to be discussed, you know, I mean, please create and like, feel free to create an issue and I am in the reuse uh, helper tool and you will get um, very thoughtful uh, replies there by, by people who, who have thought a lot about this. Um, but what I can, that's what I can tell you now, I think. Uh, okay, let's get it done. Yeah. Uh, as, uh, to, to, to chime in again, uh, reuse is for announcing your own uh, exactly. copyright information. Yeah. Others uh, would do announce their own and of course uh, it's, it's good to, to know what, what license is under uh, the, 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 the libraries you're using but it's uh, the only thing you can do is to push the, the matter upstream and to open issue and say why are not you risk compliant. Well, it's, it's, yes. it's their decision. Uh, it, you can present uh, you, uh, this possibility for having a machine readable uh, license information readily available f to others directly into the, uh, the your own repository, not third mm -hmm. party repository. That's not, yeah. not your business. It's, uh, you can only suggest. Exactly, yeah. And I can, I can put you in contact with the person who uh, wants to make Rust reuse compliant. Um, he faces a lot of those issues, you know. So <laughs> if, you're, if you're very interested. Um, so, um, but let's continue here along this, uh, along this path. So, um, so now we have reuse lint, we ran it and we see, okay, like I'm not reuse compliant. Um, that's, that's very sad. Um, so uh, let's, let's start making, let's start becoming reuse compliant. So for this, we've built the, the add header command. Um, and this allows you to specify on the command line um, what copyright uh, holder and, and what license a particular file should be licensed under. Um, and let's just see, let's just look at a file, um, how it looks now. Let's, let's take this very complicated C file here. Um, and now let's, uh, let's run reuse add header. Let's say we are John, uh, rather John Doe. And um, we also pass a flag, uh, the license flag. And then we can just give it, so let's say the readme is uh, um, on a GPL, the source file that I was referencing, main C. And then what else? And our make file is also GPL. So if you run that, it tells us successfully change header file of make file, source main C, and of readme. So let's see what that actually did to, to our C file. Um, it added, um, it, it figured out the correct um, syntax, the correct um, comment syntax for C, and uh, it added um, this correct uh, file header. Um, let me maybe briefly say one word about uh, why it's so important to have this in the header of the file rather than, um, I mean, I can understand it's much easier to just put a dep5 file and just glob your entire project and say this is under this license, it's much easier. But um, there's a couple of big downsides with that approach. And the main downside I think is when you move files around in your directory, it, they don't carry the license with them. If you have different um, paths which are which are, then you need to remember, I need to change the step five and reuse will not be able to tell you about it because it, it's just taking the information from the, 
from the globbing in your DEP5. Um, and so that's why I think we are heavily pushing in the spec for, for file headers. Um, and also I think with the advent of, to of tools like GitHub Copilot, um, I mean, this need for, for licensing of information to be present in the, in the source file itself where the code is, it becomes even more apparent. Um, and okay, so, so now let's uh, run reuse. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, in your add header command, mm -hmm. you specify the files. It would be, okay, thank you. Um, in your add header command, you specified the files. It's also possible to specify folders and, and to, to add uh, this information, license information or copyright information in all yes. files in a determined folder, thanks. So uh, we haven't, uh, so this is not um, staged, this question, um, <laughs> but I was gonna show something like that. You can do globbing, since it's a command line tool. Like I'm using fish shell here, so your usage may vary a little bit on, on other shells. But um, to show this, um, maybe let's create, um, let's create some Python files here in a, in a repository um, under the path Python. Uh, this is just a, a small little function. Um, so I need to make dear Python first, and then I can run this. And now if I run tree again, I see I have this folder called Python with a lot of Python files that all say print hello world. Um, now if I wanted to make all these Python files reuse compliant, I could um, go back here to my add header command. Um, if again John Doe was the person who wrote these Python files um, and wants them to license under GPL, then I could just go, um, Python um, and do a globbing like that. And this will add, um, there's also something maybe um, that I can point out at this point, that we have the helper scripts. Um, recently on the 1.0 release of reuse, we added some helper scripts, which are really nice um, by one of our uh, supporters and, and maintainers. Um, he added this documentation Thanks, Nico. Um, I think I find them really helpful. Um, and I, yeah, this is also some, like would be a great starting point uh, if, you, if you're a more advanced user of, of reuse to go to the documentation and then look at the helper scripts there. Um, so let's run reuse lint again to see what the, the status here is. So it's seven out of 10, seven, 10. That's my birthday. How nice. <laughs> um, but we're still, not, uh, we're still not compliant because there's three files left. Um, which aren't uh, yet um, properly copyrighted. So first, um, let's um, use this, the git ignore file, but actually use the other license that I talked about earlier um, and use that for the git ignore, uh, if I can type. Um, okay, and now it's only these two. So let's take a look at the cat. Ah, okay, it's a binary file, so we don't, um, so it's some kind of JPEG. So here um, we don't have, it's not source code, so we can't add a license header, and like Lina said, now the next best option before globbing, please don't glob, <laughs> I know it's nice, um, is to add the dot license file. Um, so, so let's try doing that. Um, so, so we again use the add header command, um, and now, uh, that's the correct license header for Whoops, sorry. I'm just gonna, okay, CC. Just, I'm, I'm just using any license here that uh, we haven't used yet to show you how reuse handles that if we haven't downloaded the license yet, but we use it in one of our file headers. So, CC by, let's, just go with that. And then we, everything in our images folder, we want to do that. And we see here, ah, okay. It uh, tells us successfully changed header of image cat license. And if you take a look at one of those files, um, it's basically, yeah, another file that was added to your repository that carries the licensing information and is basically just um, carries the extension of the, the file that you were licensing, in the, that you were licensing in the first place. Um, so let's run reuse lint. Um, and okay, we're not, we're not compliant with reuse, why? Because we've used CC by um, 
and we license files under it, but we miss the license text in the repository, and that's part of the reuse specification that the reuse license text needs to be there. So um, at this point, we can we can just um, see, see, whoop. Ah, okay, nice. <laughs> Reuse is telling us, so, okay, this doesn't work. Um, hmm? Okay, so, <laughs> this is a nice ad skills here. Um, so let's go into images. Um, okay, we, could, we can just delete this and rerun the command with the, with the correct um, license file. Did it tell me what other licenses there are? Let's use that one. Nice. Okay. I'm going to copy now so you don't have to bear with my bad typing. And okay. And now it told us okay um, again. And now we actually download this. Nice. And let's check the output. Yes, we are reuse compliant. <laughs> um, well, I mean, it <laughs> should be the standard, you know, it should be standard. Um, okay, so, so where do we go from here? Um, one thing would be to, I mean, obviously you need to, to push this. Um, we have a lot of uh, untracked stuff here. But um, one uh, nice uh, component of the project is the reuse API. We all love badges, don't we? I mean, develop, I love badges <laughs> when I'm done with the project <laughs> to add the little badge. Um, so we have an API for that, um, do, 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 where you can register your project. Um, then we'll shoot you a quick email. Um, and then we can actually do this for this repository but because I saw that there was no uh, reuse example. We, didn't, we don't have a batch here. Um, and I think I can actually push to this, so maybe if the demo gods are with me, we can, <laughs> we can, we can add the batch here um, if it's not too, um, too painful. Um, so, and uh, here we don't need to add the HTTPS. Um, it will figure that out on its own. We can subscribe to the newsletter. I'm already getting enough mails here um, at this point. And I'm probably writing this uh, this information, so I don't need to sign up. Um, let's try this again. So uh, our registration is successful. Now we can uh, go into our email. Um, <laughs> I didn't plan for this. Um, let's 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 go to my. I hope I'm not disclosing any private information here. Uh, maybe I shouldn't do that. Anyhow, uh, <laughs> it's, um, so I'll get an email, which then um, will, uh, I need to basically confirm that I'm, that I'm actually signed up for this, um, and then it will tell me how I can add the batch to my repository. And on each, um, this batch will be always up to date. Um, it will take the latest hash from the latest commit in your repo, and then make sure that, that um, then run reuse lint on it, uh, and then actually make sure that it's uh, that it's uh, that it's reuse compliant. Okay, um, maybe I point out another cool, a uh, few couple of cool resources. So one um, is the tutorial. We basically did this together now, um, but there it's all explained again and, and pretty verbose. The frequently asked questions is really like I find myself uh, looking in there quite a lot as well. And obviously, GitHub issues, um, GitHub pull requests of the past. If you actually want to become involved, or um, yeah, if you have a project that has interesting edge cases, let us know. There are loads. <laughs> um, the helper scripts. Um, yeah. Any any more questions? Um, any more questions? <laughs> well, um, there's. A lot of time left, or I don't know how much time left. Uh, how? Maybe 20, 20 minutes. So, I mean, you could, it's already late, I know. <laughs> <laughs> we have all had a little, long day of conference so, behind. Yes, yeah, please go ahead. Oh. Yeah? Uh, 
I forgot to push uh, one file, so it's I'm um, reuse non-compliant in the batch. How can I rerun the? Oh, shall ah, I rerun the, the check for when I, I fix the, the non-compliance? I mean, first fix the, yep. the non-compliance. Of course. And then it will, uh, I think, on each, um, it, will, it will just periodically check. So it should, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it will. You need to wait some minutes. Um, stay tuned for some um, radical improvements to the performance of this API. <laughs> it's currently a single threaded um, sequential execution. It's not perfect. Um, it's, it's getting better. Um, bear with us. <laughs> We're going <laughs> to. Um, maybe ah, one, one more thing since I have time. And yeah, Lina. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm thinking maybe you could uh, show us a little bit about this uh, pre-commit hook, which ah. is super cool. I was, uh, I was. I just was read your mind. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, you can, you can, you can actually. Um, so, so we're compliant here. So let's use a, um, a pre-commit hook to make sure that before every commit, we are um, re reuse lint is run, and if it exits with a zero exit code, then. Um, then uh, we can't commit. Um, so that's, that's cool, um, if you really want to enforce reuse compliance. So um, for this, we need to add a file here. I think it's, it's also, it's in the, it's in here. The pre-commit hook, if I'm not, yes. So, and we need to call it pre-commit config.yaml, yes. Um, don't need a language server for this file. Um, okay, so we added this. Um, and now we need to install. And okay, now let's push some stuff. So let's track this, or let's uh, commit rather. And now the, the commit hook runs and runs <laughs> and runs. Okay, so. Ah. Why did it fail? New file exactly. Um, so yes, uh, we we uh, <laughs> added a new file which which misses the header. So let's get out here. Um, actually, um, again, I would go with CC zero here, um, and let's see. Let's stage this and try to commit again. Ah, nice, we can commit, okay. Okay, and yep. What do I have to add? I just made my thing reuse compliant. Could you just say what file I need to add to my project so I can add this each time uh, my, I'm committing. Ah, yeah. Uh, so that's not, we don't have, we haven't, let me phrase it like this. So we have uh, so far, um, haven't implemented a lot of automation features where you could like, so for example, you could think about a, you, you just a, a reuse config, you know, where you put your name and your, uh, your, the license that you want to publish things under and then um, just run that every time you, you add a new file. There's one um, command that I can show you that I sometimes use when I'm working with a with a Grius project. It's basically, um, yeah, you ba you're basically just using the power of the shell here. Um, so let's first create a new file. Okay, good enough. 
reuse lint. Okay, we're not compliant again. Um, and now we can reuse add header. And you can you can alias that to whatever you want. Uh, what I'm going to type now. So it's basically this. <laughs> um, let me go through it. Um, so basically, it so here's a print format, which is a function in Fish, but there's similar like you can just do string interpolation in Bash, um, or command substitution rather for the for the same effect. Um, so basically, take my username in, in and substitute it here, and then take my um, in git configured user email and put it here and add the license that I want to add. I could also put that in an environment variable if I wanted to, for example. And then here I'm actually, um, this gives me all the files that are staged, but only the name, so the path of the files that are staged. And then I can also pass, because this is a TXT file that I just staged, it won't know which particular style I, because TXT can be, can you print any, anything. So I'm just saying, okay, like do a Python style, uh, Let's run this. Following arguments are required, so this didn't work. So why? Ah, because I didn't, uh, I didn't stage it. And now this should, yeah. And now it uh, successfully changed the header off. And when you run a commit, then your reuse thing checks whether everything is fine. That's that that works done by the pre-commit hook. Yeah, before before I commit. Um, I can't commit basically until, like now in this setup, I won't be able to commit if anything, if there's anything um, wrong. If the repo isn't reuse compliant, I won't be able to commit with this hook. Right? So only the only the the, thing, the things that are staged. That, that's how pre-commit works. Yeah, it only takes the it only considers the things that are staged. That's good. Uh, and if uh, I think yeah, look into the, the documentation of pre-commit. It's pretty cool. Um, and it's, it's very helpful for this kind of for this kind of task. I mean, you won't be able to push anything to the repo which isn't staged before, and so. Yeah. Thanks. And um, have you ever thought about uh, um, have you ever thought about um, uh, machine readable output? Uh, for the linter, because yes. for, 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 for <laughs> large uh, for large projects, uh, maybe uh, some automation would be needed when a uh, yes. lot of files are added, and so you can yes. automate um, things. I'm trying to make some time next week. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah. No, no, it's on the it's it's definitely on the roadmap. Okay, um, it's a kind of JSON file or something. Exactly. Yeah, we we we're, we're imagining something like this. Um, that's just JSON, and then it gives you yeah. a, a nice uh, JSON yeah. with with a version. Yeah, so I can create a script to, to automate. Exactly, yeah. And then uh, basically give you this kind of license. We we already have this uh, SPDX command, which gives yeah, you I, I know that, yeah, an S, like a yeah, yeah. bill of materials, uh, software bill of materials in SPDX format. Um, that's cool. And uh, Reuse Lint will give you, we, we are trying to like progressively add this kind of dash dash JSON to, to, to the entire tool um, so that every command will also be uh, easily, like the output of every command will be easily machine readable, so that you can plug it into your infrastructure and yeah. as you see fit. We think, well, like that's on the roadmap and it's coming soon. Yeah. May I? Uh, is there a merge request or something or? Just not yet. Up? No. It, yeah, it, it, but it's, it shouldn't be like I mean, because I, I, <laughs> trademark I mean, <laughs> shouldn't be too hard. So no. We will need that in our project. So maybe we we could just I don't know make some well, suggestions or. Yeah, um, we can we can exchange. Like I'll stick yeah. around and we can okay. exchange. Yeah, okay. it's always you, always cool. <laughs> mm, any other questions? Yeah. I think this is more for the lawyers, but we we have a few <laughs> here. So, <laughs> if, if how much will a lawyer trust the SPDX IDs added in source code as opposed to like? Do we, performing a source code scan. Would you need to do both, or can can we fully trust the SPDX SPDX IDs? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. In in uh, it depends. <laughs> 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 After the laughter, uh, I will basically tend to trust 
the uh, the reuse because the uh, the user is making an effort. Uh, there are cases where uh, in licensing information are inconsistent, and this is a problem. Um, I think the best, uh, uh, doing a scan uh, the, the traditional way, I mean, uh, uh, by, by scanning the licensing text, uh, and if it's consistent, okay, no problem. If it's inconsistent, then we have a problem. Uh, of course, depending also on how many of these five years. I mean, uh, it's a problem of also resources and, but yeah, in, in, in theory, you, sh you, should, you should trust licensing information only if it's uh, consistent. If it's, mm, if it's a reuse compliant, it should be consistent because uh, otherwise, but yeah, you never know. So if, it, if you have a double confirmation, that's double sure. If you have an inconsistency, it's, you, you have a hell of a problem and, and you need, the only way to solve it is to upstream the issue to the, the software holder because uh, they, they are the only one who can, tr of course, uh, you can risk and say, uh, I trust this more or I trust that more, but at the end of the day, you're, you're unsure and uncertainty kills you. <laughs> uh, for instance, if you use Phosology, you have this checker, you have the, the reuse uh, agent that can um, uh, apply a decision if the reuse finding kind of uh, doesn't uh, conflict with any other finding of, uh, of license scanners. But uh, you can have corner cases but because, for instance, in Linux kernel, we found a lot of uh, BSD license file, but the SPDX tag uh, uh, Told, um, was um, GPL2, yeah. and uh, that that is basically correct because the outbound license is GPL2 and the inbound license is BSD. Okay, it, could be, <laughs> it depends, <laughs> but but again, we we didn't uh, flag that uh, as a mistake because uh, th there is uh, I mean uh, of course it's a corner case, yeah. so th there is no way of saying okay this file was B was BSD. But in this context, is relicensed and under GPL, yeah. and uh, yeah. But and, and yeah. also, just maybe to frame the scope again of this of the CLI tool, it's to make uh, it easier to conform with the reuse spec, not not more. Yeah. You know? um, uh, so it's it's also a little bit the scope is just limited, you know. Um, and there are other tools for other parts of the of the chain. Um, <laughs> yeah, or maybe when we have pizza we can we can discuss this in more detail. Yeah. <laughs>